What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. As always, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, we were really just working on, like, general zoo management things, but it was really important that we did that because we had, like, no money. So now we're sitting at a nice, cool 110 thousand buckaroonies in the back pocket we love to see it so at this point i'm feeling a bit more comfortable with the thought of adding in our third exhibit we're down to just five species remaining that have yet to be added into the zuji wetlands that being the capybara or bara the platypus spectacled caiman wild water buffalo and last but not least the nile lechwi i actually think it's pronounced lechway Feel free to let me know down in the comments, but Lechwi just sounds way cooler, in my opinion. So, where do we really need to start today? I guess we should probably just clear this stuff out, because it's sort of getting in our way at the moment. Oh, and I'm just now realizing that we have an inspector who is leaving the zoo. They've seen Janky, okay, and then they've seen Mega. Very cool names, hopefully they appreciate that. Looks like they're giving us five stars on both of those. Oh, serious injury discovered. No! Hopefully, it's mom. Hopefully, mom's going to be okay. We've got a, a vet en route. I think we'll be all right. So, we'll see, though, what the um, inspector has to say about our education rating. Hopefully, everything that we did in that previous episode is going to help us out with that. But we'll see as soon as they take off. Here we go. Report ready for viewing. Still just one star on education. That is awful. We do have four stars overall, though, so I guess I can't complain that much. I really think this is probably not uh, not a good look for the zoo overall. You know, we have our education boards and our speakers and stuff inside of this indoor viewing facility, but we don't yet have anything over here, so we'll probably have to address that. We can worry about that at a later date. But I've been sort of toying around with what our next new species is going to be or what our next new exhibit is going to be and i think i've landed on the spectacled caiman the title and thumbnail has probably already given that away but i think this area right here like this canal that we've made should work out okay what no dude i can't watch this one last little call oh that is not good dude This, this is, like, I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely upset right now. That is not okay. Okay, let's just pause things here. Mom has just died of old age, so her injury probably couldn't have been prevented, but ultimately led to her demise. Great, great. Really starting things off on a happy note today, aren't we? God, that is just really upsetting. Our vet is here. I do think that we have the option to do like some type of memorial type deal now that, that wasn't available before. So hopefully we can do something nice for, for mom there. That is a, a real bummer. We're going to go ahead and pause things because I just don't think I could handle another animal dying on us here today. So what I would like to do, like I said, is sort of utilize this area. It kind of... It looks a little phallic, I, I realize this, but I'm hoping that we can just sort of bury some glass barriers, or I guess they don't have to be glass, but some type of barrier just running alongside the path here down into the depths of the water. So this whole area would be the Cayman's like deep pool. We could also extend it like underneath the path, maybe. Usually though, the path gets in the way of the habitat barrier. So I'm not sure that that's really feasible, but I'm going to tinker around with this for a few minutes and we'll see what I can come up with. I wouldn't say it's particularly appealing, you know, visually, but I do think it'll get the job done. I went ahead and just lowered it down so it's it's almost flush with our boardwalk. We could end up covering like the top side of it with something later on, but I think for right now it's going to work out just fine. As for the remaining barrier i really want to get a little bit more creative you know i, I don't just want to use the in-game barriers for everything under the sun so kind of like what we did for the aviary except we're not going to be making a cage for some uh caimans but what i want to do is utilize the same mesh and just sort of make our own fence 
using those materials. So I'm going to give that a crack and we'll see if it looks decent enough to use. We're going to start things off here by just dropping in a nice, simple concrete wall. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy because it ain't sticking around for very long. We're just sort of using that as a base for this fence. So we have the option between the mesh like chain link panel or we could use the same one that we used for the aviary which is more like a chicken wire type design but obviously a lot larger i think i'm gonna go with the chain link option just for the simple fact of we've already used the other one so we might as well tinker around with this one while we're at it i do want to do something a little bit different for this fence though on the top portion of it because you know they're they're lizards at the end of the day these these caimans or at least i i think that's right You'll correct me even if I'm wrong on that. But I'm almost positive that they'd be able to get their, like, claws in here and scale this fence. Unless we do something to prevent that from happening. So I'm going to make a quick border using a, a similar sort of steel type thing that we used on that aviary. We'll make a nice border and then we'll tackle that top portion. So for this top portion here, I've got just a tiny beam at the very, very top instead of the 4 meter ones we've been using. And I'm just going to add a slight angle to it. I think something like that should probably get the point across. Like, hey, listen here, lizards. You're not to be climbing this here fence. With that one in position, we're just going to simply duplicate it and drag it on over to the opposite end here. And actually, I'm kind of building this all wrong, aren't I? We wouldn't, we wouldn't really want a double-sided thing. Because we're going to be placing them, like, in a repeating type fashion. But... We'll, uh, we'll worry about that here at the very end of things. So now that we have that done, we're going to need another cross brace at the very, very top of those two. So we're just going to slide this out and then bring it up and slide it on into position. Pretty easy. Now we just need a little bit more of that chain link mesh, but we're not going to be able to use the same size panel that we did on the base portion of it. So we need to find something else that's going to fit just perfectly up here. I think... I think this one might actually work. To my surprise, that actually worked pretty well and it looks pretty good. So I'm very, very happy with this. But as I mentioned, we are gonna be placing these sort of like back to back to back in, in a type of repeating fashion here. So we don't really want one side, this one. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Now, if we exit this and we were to just say duplicate it, we could slide it on over. And um, it's not going to look funny. Now on to phase two here. That's going to be getting all of these fences actually placed and in their proper orientation. So I'm going to drop this down just, just until it like hits the top of the barrier that we made. There can be a little gap at the bottom. I don't really care about that too much. It's going to be junctions like this right here that are going to kind of make this a little bit more of a pain in the butt than it would have been otherwise. So since we've kind of got a, a slight angle, you can see I'm trying to sort of curve it around this way. It's not gonna really line up perfectly on the top side because we have the top angled inward, but I think we can tweak that a little bit and make it not as noticeable. So far though, so good. I I'm feeling pretty good about this decision. A few moments later. Just about 15, 20 minutes later, something like that anyways, we now have a very, very nice looking completed fence. I know I, I'm saying completed and you guys are probably looking at this like, Tuji, you, you missed a whole section of it here on the backside. Well, I'm planning on doing a similar thing to what we did up here, again, with the glass barrier, but on this backside. So that'll kind of cap off the entire exhibit as a whole. Right now, I have no way of knowing if this is gonna be large enough for these Caymans, but I guess we're gonna find out here in due time. So back onto our glass barrier. We're not going to be using the glass from here on out, or I guess underneath the fence that we just made. Instead, we're going to be using the null fence if it'll work. Sometimes it works, other times, not so much. Right now, I think our major hangup is going to be it's too close to that path. Now that we've got that barrier brought around the rest of the way, sort of underneath our custom fence, I think what I want to do is actually try a curved section of glass just over here we'll try to do one big panel of course that's probably not going to work so we'll split it up into two not a huge deal connect that up right there and then we can move this one a little bit more in the center oh that's going to look super weird though isn't it 
Maybe we don't do curved then. The nice part about doing it this way though is say we do place the Caymans in here and they need a little bit more space. Well, we can just grab this and drag it out here. Give them a few extra, you know, square footage. But for right now, I think we're just going to leave that right there. So all of these, well, I guess maybe not this one, but from here on over to about here, we're going to transform into a null fence. Oh God, I just moved the entire thing. Okay, good. We're fine. Everything's fine. And then again, on this side from here, all the way over to about here, that will all as well be a null fence or will be a null fence as well. You know what I mean. Now we've got our rough outline complete for this exhibit. Next, what we need to start thinking about is where we're going to have our keepers actually enter into this habitat from. And I think just one of these fence panels, if I just, if I just tweak it slightly, I should be able to get it to work. Hopefully it'll look as clean as this thing does, dude. I mean, that is just chef's kiss perfect right there. So we'll, we'll see. I'll try my hand at it. See if we can come up with something similar looking anyways. After like 10 or 15 additional minutes of tweaking and, and trying to make sure everything is nice and aligned, I'd say that's a job well done. Honestly, that looks, that looks perfect. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. So with the entrance now complete, I think we're ready to try to add in a couple of these animals. Then we'll be able to see sort of what else they actually need in here. Jumping into the animal market here, we have Lucas, who has a bronze medal for 19 cc's. Seems good. Seems good. They're all a bit old, which is kind of strange. Let's see what his stats are. Immunity is a bit poor, but I think with a little bit of research, shouldn't be a huge issue for us. We'll go ahead and send him to this uh, exhibit. Or not. Oh, no path. Right. Yep. Honest mistake. Honest mistake. We're going to do a temporary staff path here. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy huge. We're just going to get this stretched all the way out to that path there. Now we should be able to add in those animals. So we've got one male. Let's just get another female. Eolanda? Is that how you would pronounce that? Or would it be Iolanda? Probably Eolanda. Anyways, she is 19 and a half years old. Size is not the greatest. Immunity, pretty much the same. Actually, exactly the same as uh, whatever his name was. It's bad because I've already forgotten. But let's get her moved there. Lucas. And then Lucas, we've got to get sent into there as well. Now we can unpause things. We'll let things play out. Let our uh, caretakers bring those animals from the trading center, I think, is where they go. All the way out to here. We've got our first spectacled caiman arriving. Right meow. We'll see how much they're going to hate their environment. And then the other one is is close behind. This is going to be Eolanda. Oh, they're way smaller than I thought. That's right. Well, she, granted, has like a really, really small uh, size gene. Um, what did that say? Keeper cannot reach habit. Yet you're here right now. What do you mean? I think, I think you're fine. I think you're fine. But yeah, the, the Caymans, I guess, are just smaller in general. You can see there's there's not a big size difference between these two, but let's pause things here again so these animals don't get too upset with us. Wow. Wow, we did pretty good right out the gate. Habitat and everything here seems good. Terrain is going to need adjusting. That's to be expected. But nutrition... Granted, they haven't been fed yet. Social is fine as of right now. Enrichment is the only thing that's really um, affecting their, their welfare overall. Moving on to terrain. Terrain setup is appropriate for this animal at 71%. Looks like they have plenty of land. They're going to have plenty of water. And this animal doesn't need like super, super deep underwater areas. So that's perfect. They do have a little bit of deep water right over here. But usually, usually this reflects the deep water, does it not? Animals will only swim underwater with a minimum area of more than nine feet, 10 inches. This animal has no welfare requirement for underwater swimming. So I guess they don't need it, but they're glad that they have it. That's kind of what I'm gathering from this. So they need a little bit more rock and a little bit less sand. That's actually really simple. I kind of just had an epiphany of sorts as I'm painting the terrain here. Wasn't Kip's 
girlfriend in Napoleon Dynamite, was it her name Yolanda? Or was it, no, I think it was La Fonda. Never mind. We could always change her name, I guess, if we wanted it to be super, super accurate. But I think even just with a little bit of rock like that, they should be quite a bit happier. Check their terrain again. That's actually too much rock. So let's add in a little bit more sand, maybe. Okay, that seems to be a little bit more in line with the sort of terrain that these animals are expecting. So let's go back to the main overview. Their welfare hasn't improved yet, but it will. Trust me, you guys, it will. We just have to add in a few, like, enrichment items for these boys, or boys and girls. You know what I mean. Keeper has... Wait, Habitat has no keepers assigned or free to visit. Well, I mean, that's obvious. We we haven't set up a, a keeper. We're, we're going to do that, game. All right, you're way, you're way too far ahead of me. Moving into their habitat and, like, enrichment items, stuff like that. We're going to change our filter here to the spectacled caiman. When I first heard about this animal, I thought it was the speckled caiman, which, I mean, kind of makes sense because they do have some spotting going on in their colors. But now we're going to see exactly what these animals are needing. Oh, the underwater fish feeder box. You guys, I've never, I've never been able to get that to work properly. So hopefully this is the time where it's actually going to do something. Let's place that right here. It has to be at a certain depth. And I think that's really the, the difficult part about that. Hopefully that works. Moving on to probably the mud bath next. There's a little bit more of a peninsula over here. So we're going to have a bit easier time placing that right there, I think, than on the other side. But at least they have the option, you know, they could stay over here, they could venture across the little creek or river or whatever this thing is, see what the other side has to offer. Maybe a rubber duck? Maybe they'd be interested in getting that duck. You never know. As for their food and water, they already have access to a tremendous amount of water, so we don't need to add like a water pipe, water trough, anything of that sort. Instead, we're just going to drop down a nice large food tray pretty close to the keeper's entrance so they don't actually have to go that far to refill that thing. Then we can get a small ball or something maybe over in that corner. Then we could place down this block of frozen fish maybe right there. I love how those like slightly adjust the terrain every time you place them down. Not really sure why that happens, I guess. Probably so it has a solid surface to, uh, to lay on or to rest on. Let's hit play. And we'll check in here with Yolanda again. Ooh, the enrichment. There it is, dudes and dudettes. We've done it. All right, good deal. Good deal. And they're already swimming. Love that. Okay, so something that I didn't really think about until literally just now is I don't think we have a water treatment facility close enough to tend to that pool. Let's check. Actually, we can just check the heat map. What am I thinking for water? Oh, we do. This whole thing is affected now. Okay, that's great. So maybe, I know I said we would just place these things down temporarily, but maybe that's a good location. I mean, it is almost directly in the center of the zoo overall. So I guess that could be like our utility spot, but then we still have this whole land mass here on that peninsula for another exhibit. Let's see what the guests are thinking of the spectacled caiman. We've got two people over here couple of people making their way out from the vendor area trying to get a look at these animals i love it i love it all right we've got a little bit of vet research now complete as well on the asian small clawed otter only one left to go until they're fully researched but we're gonna take her and put her back on the red crown crane it seems like there's more to research with the otter than there is with the crane which is interesting and now we're gonna have to start our research on the spectacled caiman as well We'll check in here with this exhibit, see if we can't upgrade their food quality. I know they'd probably appreciate that. Grade 3, there it is. 165 or 163, maybe? I don't remember. 160 bucks to feed those, all right? All the cranes. Now, over here with the otters, it is $1,700, you guys, per feed, which is probably once or twice a day. That's going to add up. That is definitely, definitely going to add up. We can only feed the, the spectacled caimans. I should just call them caimans. We can only feed the caimans grade one at the moment, but we'll be adjusting that here before too long. See what else we've got. Has no keepers assigned. Noted. 
let's go ahead and pause things here once again and we'll get uh We'll get a nice temporary keeper location out here. I know a lot of people hate the sort of copy and paste that people will do in Planet Zoo or Planet Coaster for that matter, but it does save an incredible amount of time. So I'm just gonna copy this, a known working location, and we're gonna slide it on over here. This is actually gonna give us a little bit closer staff resting facility. Well, I guess they're, they're about the same distance, tell you the truth, so. We'll just kind of reserve this for other staff members, maybe not those vendors. But we can place that down right there. Now that we've done that, that's $12,000 down the drain. We've got to go to our little zoo tab here under staff and get ourselves another keeper. They're going to be mainly, actually only, taking care of the spectacled caiman. But in order for that to be a reality, we of course have to set them up with their own little work zone. So just these three things here. That is going to be the Cayman Keeper Work Roster. That is all she wrote. Now, we've just got to find that Keeper we just placed down. Should be you kind of walking away from us. Oh, yeah, this facility, or those two facilities, I guess, aren't going to have power. So we're going to have to address that here in just a moment. But I need to give you your Cayman Keeper Work Zone. And there we go. So, yeah, she is kind of going the complete opposite direction of the habitat at the moment, but I think she's just going to use somebody else's facility until we can get power out to these. So, how do we want to do that? We've already got Optimus Prime over here in the center, so maybe we add... Oh, check this out! Check this out! Maybe we add like a solar panel or something. You guys, it actually works! It actually works! I love it. We kind of missed our opportunity in the previous episode to have a look at this thing. That is fantastic. And we caught it just in the nick of time, too. He's just wrapping up his talk. That is so cool. What a neat addition. Honestly, I'm surprised that that didn't exist, you know, from the get-go. So let's add just a temporary solar panel out here. Again, we don't need anything too fancy. It's just going to be here for a little while. Oh, never mind. We haven't researched solar power yet. So we're going to be stuck using another Optimus Prime, but it should be just fine I would think these do give off a little bit more negative impact on our guests though so we have to be a bit cautious about where we're actually placing this we'll just put it sort of behind the building for right now grab another staff path and we can get this snaked around the building and connect it up to the existing paths that way our mechanics actually have a way of getting out to repair that thing when it inevitably breaks down so at this point in time the only real, like, good viewing areas for the Caymans is going to be this, like, crossroads that we have going out through the middle of the zoo. Which is going to work for right now, but eventually, I do think we need some sort of path over here. We'll probably end up moving this whole facility somewhere else. Still close by, but just somewhere else. But for right now, I think what we can do next is grab just a slightly larger concrete path. And we don't need to bring this super close to their exhibit, but I do want the guests to at least have a little bit easier time viewing these animals than they do right now, so that'll work. That'll definitely work. Let's see if we can adjust this curve over here. Try to make that look a little bit nicer. Maybe one mo again. Nope. Okay. It's, it's not liking that. We'll just, we'll just leave it as it is. We will just leave it as it is. But yeah, all the guests over here are absolutely loving it. We're definitely going to need some signage, like the do not feed the animal signage, just so people aren't hucking their garbage into the water here. That would not be good. But these animals are absolutely loving it, both Lucas and Yolanda. Just swimming it up, having a grand old time here. Lucas, you are quite a bit larger than your wife. So, hopefully you guys can have some decent size bet bet. That could be a pretty, pretty cool. Vet research complete again, this time on the Red Crown Crane. That's going to be them maxed out. So let's get our other vet on the Spectacled Cayman. As is the case with any of our other exhibits, we do still have to make money on these animals one way or another. So I'm just going to place probably three donation bins right over there. We'll put another one just in the center of the crossroads there. And then maybe just one more right over here on the corner. Ultimately, there's not a whole lot of area for the guests to view the animals from this side. But um, that'll change. That will definitely change. What you doing, lizard boy? 
Are you like stuck or something? Oh no, you're just making a deuce. All right, with our donation bins in place, I'm gonna go around now and add in just a couple of the Habitat Education boards. We don't really need too many of them, tell you the truth, but we'll do them in like the main locations. Now we can go around and add our speakers just in front of each and every one of those. We're sitting with three right now. I think three is gonna be plenty. Now all we have to do is go through and make sure that these are actually educating the guests on the proper species. Oh man, I love it. I love it. This was by far the easiest exhibit that I've ever created. It, it's definitely not done. Don't freak out. We gotta add some, some foliage, some additional decor and things. But uh, just for starters here today, feeling pretty good about what we've done thus far. I have absolutely no way of knowing just how long this episode's gonna turn out to be. But I hope you guys still enjoyed nonetheless. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.